Hello, I'm Malcolm Cox, and this is this week's Tuesday Teaching Tip for Tuesday the 17th of January 2017. Hope you like it. It's called Connection Crisis. Connection Crisis. Oh, and by the way, if you're already subscribing to these, fantastic, thank you so much. If you're not, please consider doing so and letting your friends know about it so that we can spread the word. Connection Crisis. This comes out of a conversation I had in a car with a friend in Singapore last week, and he asked me, what do we do when we're speaking and we lose connection with the people to whom we are speaking? There's a drop, there's a gap, and what do we do then? And so we discussed that, and I thought it'd be good to record a, a, some ideas here. Of course, the answer depends on the circumstances. It will happen to everybody. What do we do? Well, first of all, we need to think about the context. So there are times when it's good just to stop. There is a saying that the show must go on, but of course, preaching and teaching is not a show. Instead, there are times when we do need to stop. When? Well, when there's a particularly significant break in the connection. For example, I was at a wedding when somebody fainted. One of the groomsmen fainted. In another wedding, the bride fainted. At those times, it doesn't matter what you're saying or what you're doing, you've just got to stop. That's possible in that situation in a, a big group, but also sometimes in a small group. Uh, I was preaching last year for the Watford Church of Christ, wonderful fellowship, please come and visit us. Um, and somebody knocked over a cup of coffee, which is not in itself a major thing, but when you're in a group of 10 or 15 people and it spills everywhere and the whole group are looking around, they're looking down, they're getting out their tissues from their pocket, they're handing it to the person who shall remain nameless, though you know who you were, uh, to mop it up, then of course you've just got to stop. There's no point carrying on, no one's listening to you anymore. So there are times just to stop. That happened of course to the, uh, the Apostle Paul when he was preaching and teaching in Acts chapter 20. Eutychus fell asleep, fell out of the window. Ah, uh, he was dead on the ground. You've got to stop. So there are times just to stop. Don't try and carry on. So that's one option. Secondly, there are also times to move on. So you've been preaching and teaching, you feel you've lost the connection, what do you do? It could well be that you've been repeating yourself and it's become boring, in which case, cut to the point and move on. Okay, that's the end of that. My next point, my next illustration, my next story, my next thought, the next section of scripture. Just move on. There's a tendency for many preachers, and unfortunately I have to include myself, and it's been helpfully pointed out to me that this is a tendency of mine to repeat ourselves. When you said your point and you've lost the connection, move on to the next point. That's another option. Thirdly, the next thing to think about is the context, the room uh, that you're in. Is it particularly hot? Is it particularly cold? If it is very stuffy, you may just want to pause for a moment and say, can we open some windows? Can we open some doors, get some ventilation? Or just acknowledge it's really cold, isn't it? But look, let's, let's huddle ourselves together and, and let's uh, learn a bit and then we'll be done and we'll get some hot, we'll get some tea or coffee. I think one time recently I actually stopped the sermon and asked if we could serve some tea. It was so cold and that warmed people up and then we carried on. So it depends on the context of how people are feeling. And another thing to consider is if there have been any dramatic events in the society around you that may be distracting people, and that might be why the connection has been lost. A few years ago, well, quite a few years ago now, I was um, leading a church in Manchester, and it was during that time that Princess Diana died, and she was killed in a car crash. I remember getting up that morning, turning on the radio and hearing the news and thinking it was just bizarre and, and not sure if it was real or not. And when we got to church that morning, it was a Sunday morning, the whole church were just completely distracted. I tried to preach. I tried to preach a sermon, no idea what it was about, but it, I, I tried and I felt through the whole sermon, almost no one was really paying attention. They were just so emotionally affected by what had just happened. With hindsight, I'd have been much better off to say, you know what, I'm not sure there's any point in preaching right now. Here's a verse or two for us to think about, and then why don't we pray? Why don't we sing? And just take the whole thing to God and, and ask him to help us and to be with Diana's family. And I think that would have been a better response now I look back on it. But if there's been a major event like that or a tsunami uh, from a few years ago, then maybe cut the sermon short, make it a devotional, and that might be a better use of your time and the people around you. Next thing to think about, is whether you've become monotonous. 
Sometimes we lose connection with the people we're speaking to because we've become monotonous. We've started speaking in a certain way with a certain rhythm and it's gone on the same way again and again. And we have become rather like a lullaby. Have you ever thought about why lullabies work as we try to help children to get to sleep? It's because the range is very narrow. You don't have very low notes and you don't have very high notes. And it's also because there's a repeated sort of rhythm. So, rock a bye baby on the treetop, when the wind blows the wind, and, and, and so on and it goes. I hope I'm not putting you to sleep now. Narrow range, repeated rhythm, and hopefully baby goes to sleep. Well, sometimes that's like if we're preaching and teaching, and it's a very narrow range. We're just within not too high, not too low. And it's a zen. we talk about this, we talk about that, and next point, da, da, da. No wonder we lose connection. At those points, you've got to use some pauses. And just as you go along, stop, and then continue. Or raise your voice, or lower your voice, not for the just the purposes of effect, but, but so that, well, hopefully it's affecting you from inside, and, and then it, you communicate the significance of what you're speaking about to the congregation. So perhaps that's something to think about, not becoming too monotone. And finally, well, just to wrap up, a lot of it sometimes is just down to our own passion. I'm not talking about how loud we are necessarily, or how fast or slow we speak, but just is what we're talking about really significant to us? Sometimes we lose connection, with our congregation simply because they've detected this doesn't really matter to me as I'm speaking and therefore why should it matter to them? So passion is something that needs to be there as well. Have these thoughts been helpful? Have they been interesting or stimulating? Let me know what you think. I would love to hear your ideas on what we do when we lose connection with the people to whom we are speaking. Send me your ideas. You can email me mccx at mac.com or you can leave a message anywhere you hear or see this recording and please do subscribe and tell your friends about these recordings if you find them helpful so until the next time i hope you have a terrific tuesday and a wonderful week god bless <laughs>